Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and that's not a karate black belt. That is a Six Sigma uh, master black belt. So it's a process uh, technique, you know, to reduce defects. And uh, the domain I've chosen now, uh, my company is called Zofter Health Private Limited, which is basically a home health company with a disruptive healthcare aggregator model. And so Six Sigma really applies very well. And again, the question that is often asked since I'm in the company of a lot of esteemed doctors is that why the name Zofter? So we have a cheesy answer to that. We want to work with Zabardas doctors such as yourself. Hence the name uh, Zofter. And of course, it rhymes with doctor. So Zofter doctor, right? Now coming straight to the point, uh, I believe that there are two challenges that we as a company are trying to address. Firstly, there has been a lot of advancement in uh, you know, diagnostics, in treatment protocols, uh, in in-house, in hospital patient management. But I believe that one area which has been neglected and which still needs a solution is the aftercare. So once a patient gets discharged, are there structured, standardized protocols for taking care of the patient? Are there resources with specialized skills? So I'll give an example which is very personal. So my father had a surgery, a spinal surgery in one of the hospitals in uh, Delhi. And as it happens, he developed a CSF leak. And he was having terrible headache. And uh, at the age of 80, it would have probably led to a hematoma. So when he was discharged, the hospital uh, you know, absolved itself of all responsibility. And the treating consultant said, this cannot be a side effect of the surgery. With the result that we had to refer to another doctor, go for a second emergency surgery. And then, of course, the problem got resolved. So the point I'm making is that there is a gap in the aftercare and continuity of care post-acute situation, post-discharge situation. So that is the first issue. The second issue is of pure economics. So we, as a country, have 0.9 beds per 1,000 patients, hospital beds, which is one of the lowest numbers and it is lower than the WHO required average of 2.5 beds per 1,000 patients. So as we see it, the biggest challenge will be, the devil will be the real estate. So no matter how much infrastructure you build, hospital beds will not be able to match the population growth. And therein comes the need to have an innovative solution to this. And when I say that doctor is a disruptive healthcare aggregator, what we are trying to do here is to kind of address that need. So let me give an example. Now, I am a patient of stroke, and I uh, you know, finished my acute uh, critical phase, and I am discharged. So doctor would refer the patient to doctor, and what we would do is that we would create a high dependency unit at the patient's home. So as an example, if the patient needs an aero bed for the next three months, a patient needs a suction pump, a, a cancer patient could be on a Ryles tube, could need a suction pump, could need an oxygenator, a uh, wheelchair, uh, uh, CPAP, BiPAP, any of these devices. Second is we will make provision for 24 by 7 uh, nursing staff. Now again, when I say nursing staff, see it is a very different thing to say I am an ANM and I know how to put an injection and find a central line, than to say that yes, if it is cancer, I will be able to recognize the symptoms of a spinal cord compression, or will be able to handle a royal tube, or will be able to manage stomach care. So we will uh, make that provision, and then the third thing would be that we would also have what do you call diagnostics. So anybody needs sample pickups from home. Uh, anybody needs mobile x-rays. We have mobile x-ray options as well. And then, uh, uh, of course, any pharmacy delivery. So aggregating the entire set of services. Now, this is the core proposition. Now, how does it work in practice? So the first thing that doctor is doing is that we are creating, uh, picking up uh, existing medical content in literature and creating massive libraries of training material, videos, and to-do cheat sheets. So if a patient has A, what will you do? I've interviewed nurses where I asked, what do you do in an anaphylactic shock? And they do not have answers. So we will create those cheat sheets and put electronic content online. And all of this content will be used to train thousands of doctors, paramedics, nurses across India to know how to manage a patient care situation, whether it is daily patient monitoring, vitals monitoring, or its emergency response system. Now, what happens on the platform is that when the patient goes on to an online www.doctor.com, he would be able to say, I need a nursing service, I need a doctor, I need a physiotherapist, I need a bed, and would be able to you know, press go and order that service. And suppose I am a patient out of Savdarjang Enclave, at the back end I have these thousands of nurses, and of course some of them are mapped to Savdarjang Enclave, and with ICU skills or other skills, depending on what the patient is looking at. 
And so three nurses will get uh, kind of a you know confirmation that there's a patient. So they will say, I am available. So nurse one is available, nurse two is available. Uh, the nurse three is a backup. And then they will communicate with the patient and they'll be available at the patient's home. Uh, and the patient will sign the contract and move forward. Similarly, the patient says, I need a bed. So my backend vendor on the website or the mobile app is, let's say, a Janak Healthcare. So they will arrange for the bed, they will arrange for the installation, the demo, whatever it takes, and then deliver the bed. So the HDO will be formed by these various uh, uh, aggregators. Now, once the HDO is set up at the patient's home, what is the next step? The next step is that obviously there's an EMR technology. And now we are very aggressively looking at using wearables as a technology. So instead of waiting for the nurse to say, take vital data, we are going to put a remote uh, patch or a band, wherein you know we can look at uh, heart rate, uh, pulse oximetry, uh, uh, you know all the other blood sugar uh, parameters. And now we are also looking at uh, some devices wherein you can transfer the ECG, a 12 lead high resolution ECG using a, a Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi integration technology. So what we are doing right now is to integrate some of these devices with our platform backend so that we can continuously pull in data from the patient's home and also see how the you know the uh, outcome is the health outcome is the main thing that how did the resolution happen over month one how did the patient improve over month three how did the patient improve and what's also more important is let's look at the scenario of geriatric patients so it is not only me and the patient who's seeing the data a patient's patient's children sitting in the u.s could actually be monitoring their mother's heart rate and blood sugar levels uh, 1,000 miles away. So that is how we would enable the uh, EHR part. So that kind of sums up uh, you know, the whole uh, process. And again, what we are simply saying and what we believe the market should say tomorrow is that a doctor and a doctor together form a total health solution. Thank you very much.